Hello from What You Have To Do on the bridge of the Here's To Us. Today we are at Detour Village where we spent a lovely afternoon here. Went up and ate at the Mainsail restaurant and uh, kind of got things organized. Looked at our planning to go up to the Sioux. It's a distance of about 40 miles and we're going to be going on the west side of Nevis Island. What they call the Rock Cut. So it should be some pretty picturesque scenery. And we're going to go into George Camp Marina which is a state marina. So... I'm ready to go. Nice to have the whole big space, isn't it? <laughs> and a double wide, plenty of room here. Check out the back here. Really nice. Cloudy day for a change. We've been getting used to sunny summer days, but it's so nice and cool. I do appreciate that. Gary's working hard this morning already. You're doing great back here. You've got a long way before you get to the fuel dock. Right, leaving the tour but we will be back on this trip maybe it's an option headed up to the Sioux St. Marie area yeah Sioux is not spelled like you think it is. It's S-A-U-L-T. So even when I saw it on the map, it was like, where are we going? Where are we going? <laughs> that's that's the way it is. Now go with Discovery. Now go with Discovery. Our vessel here to us. Uh, go ahead. Channeling. Hey. Discovery, I'm channeling. Yeah, motor vessel here is on. Uh, we're coming up on you. Yeah. Which side, sir, would you like me to uh, arrange for uh, gas? Whatever you want is fine with me. I'll just keep my regular course. You do your thing. All right. We'll, we'll plan it on the two then. Thank you, sir. It will, so. Roger that. We'll maintain our course. Why'd you pick two? I'm on 16. Uh, eight, channel eight for the other radio. Mm, okay. Ready? Yeah, the other radio. Well, obviously, I uh, hadn't gotten my checklist done because I didn't have the VH radio where Sam needed it. He was searching around. But I wanted to know why did you ask this barge to pass on the two? Well, because the way he was already heading and the way that I'm heading was better for me to stay on the two rather than cross over on the one. And I also looked at the channel here and just decided, well, I'd ask him, since he's the bigger ship, which way, and he said it didn't matter to him. So he's going to maintain his course, and uh, it was better for me to just maneuver and go for a pass on the two whistle. Gotcha. And the other thing is, I didn't know was, now I know, is what channel the uh, ships monitor in this area here, and it's channel 8, which is a new one for me, so usually uh, 13 or 14 is what uh, bridges or tows are on, but this is a ship, and they're on channel 8, so now we know, and we have the other radio, which is good. Hold on, 
other one's coming. Right here. That was fun. So Sam called me up front to be a lookout. I got my coffee as I sit here and look out. He updated his charts last night on Garmin and there seemed to be a software issue. So he called Garmin, they called him right back and everything seems to be working fine now. They're very responsive and uh, that's a great thing about Garmin. So I uh, programmed really to come off a plane at uh, a certain time and I'm glad I did because I looked up ahead here and I've got a couple of markers out there and two fishing boats and then uh, so we've slowed down so we're not going to wake them but we got an oncoming vessel uh, on AIS shows it's doing like 24 miles an hour so we're coming up on a trawler here we are upbound on the St. Mary's River in what's called the rock cut area and to me it's just amazing how they've dredged this to you know, 33 35 feet for the freighters to come through and all around it you see you know depths of two or four feet so that is a heck of a lot of rock to remove and whoever did that i'm sure it took years to do it it'd be nice to find out about that but anyway there's a trawler up here and one of the challenges is he does not have AIS, so I don't know his call sign or how to call out to him. And we've also put binoculars on him. But the name of his boat is obscured by the dinghy. And the dinghy has something painted, but it's such fine print that we cannot read it. So one of the ways that we can do that is we can call out on channel 16 and uh, say uh, upbound trawler on the St. Mary's River approaching Red 16 and see if they are listening in uh, trucker lingo I guess you got your ears on so we'll give it a try and see what happens upbound trawler on the St. Mary's River approaching Red 16 motor vessel here's to us how copy Clean, go ahead, unicorn. Alright, could you go to uh, 6 8, sir? Receive 6 8. There's a motor vessel here to us, how copy? Clean, copy clear, go ahead. Yeah, I could not read your uh, call sign on the back of your dinghy there, but we're coming up on you. We'll pass you on the two whistle if uh, that's okay. That's great. I'll pull over and slow down a bit. All right, I've got to give you a nice one to use the gas. And, uh, motor vessel here to us. We'll be going back uh, 1 6 and channel 8. All right, so we made contact with him. His name is Leanne, or the boat's name is Leanne. And so he's going to move over to the side and slow down so we can pass him without giving him too much of a wake. So that's a way to do it when you don't know the boat's name, there's no AIS, and get in contact with them and try to give them a slow pass so we don't wake them. Give me an update, we uh, still have about 19 miles to go and we are entering this narrow section of the rock cut as they call it, we're on the western side of Nevis Island which is still in the United States on the eastern side of the Nevis Island there's another channel that the upbound freighters use so you can see this is narrow so you wouldn't have to have two uh, freighters meeting in here we've looked out we don't see a freighter coming but there'd be plenty of room to maneuver and off to the left here you'll see an area here that looks like it would be a great place to anchor and it is called the Rock Cut Anchorage, and it is annotated on the chart. So as we're trying to think of options as we get up to Lake Superior and come back and timing and weather, kind of look at some of these places along the way and say, good. And it'll tell us that, you know, you can get one or two boats in there and it's 10 feet of water. And so it looks like it would be good protection uh, from weather.
weather along the way. So uh, entering the rock cut and scouting out anchorages along the way. Just enjoying the scenery. Wish it were a better day for you. It's kind of a cold and blustery. Cold is relative at this point in the uh, summertime. But for our friends back in Dallas, it's about, what, 60 degrees here? And uh, nice nice to be out of the heat in the summertime. You know, different parts of the loop have different things to look at. Sometimes you can, there is no land around and you're right out in the middle of a body of water. Sometimes you see water on one side, but then sometimes going down rivers or right now we're in this cut, we see land really close to us on both sides. So it's just, the Great Loop has such a variety of waterways. And over on this side of this particular cut, you see rocks piled up. That's actually the rocks that they dredged out of here. The, the reason it's so deep now. So we're exiting uh, one part of the rock cut here and uh, because it gets so narrow in here, you know, the water get this venturi effect. And we actually picked up a pretty good current along here. And um, Looks I'm running like a about a stick in the road right over yeah, there. A stick or a branch or something like that. We're in 31 feet of water here, so pretty impressive how they cut this out. And uh, we're running about 100 RPM uh, more than we do normally at about one uh, mile per hour slower. So there is a noticeable current in here. And Lightness. It, yeah, and it's going to widen out here a little bit and then it will get narrow again. And I see uh, up here ahead, it appears to be maybe uh, boats or so up here. So widening out and then we'll be back into another narrow portion of the cut on the western side of the Nebish Island. Going through the rock cut still, and as you look out there, this looks really wide. You know, there's a lot of water out there, but look at how close those aids to navigation are. And you can see here on the chart plotter, you don't want to get off course too much because it says two feet over there. So I'm currently in 36 feet of water and uh, two feet on the uh, sides, so it'll get your attention real quick if you get off course. So uh, we're monitoring it very closely, and we see up ahead the aids to navigation, the red and the green buoys. Looks like the current is not too bad here because we're about normal, and uh, there there's still a little bit of current, maybe about a half knot, but with this wide open here, it's not as much. The rock cut on the eastern side of the Nebish Island. It was started in the early 1900s, I think like 1904. It took four years to dig it out and uh, I think the original depth was about 22 feet from what I read and then they got it uh, more in the I guess late 20s and again in the 60s uh, kind of dredged it out but currently uh, controlling depth here about 27, 30 feet from what I read. So plenty of water as long as you stay in the channel. Yeah, so Sam already told you about this cut that we're in. On either side, I see three, five, six feet outside of this marked channel. And sure enough, there is a barge or freighter, a freighter, a freighter mm -hmm. coming through. Yeah, the Dorothy Ann. And so radioed uh, the Dorothy Ann on 16 and asked him which side, and he said uh, his port. So uh, radioed back, said see on the one, and we're just going to move over to the side. He's moving over to his side. Plenty of room in the cut, but you know, just got to. Plenty of room, but I'd rather. And realize that, you know, you're, you're still at 33 feet of water. I'm on the side of the channel here. Okay. But, you know, we're just going to aim for that red buoy up there and just stay on the uh, port side of that red buoy. Leave it to our starboard. Here he comes. 
That's huge. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. He's uh, going downbound, but he's got the current going with him. The St. Mary's River really just drops from uh, the end of Whitefish Bay down to uh, the uh, Detour Village. It only drops 23 feet, so there's not a huge amount of current, but it is uh, a little bit noticeable, and here he comes. I'll give him a little bit more to the right here. Yeek! <laughs> Pushing a lot of water there going down there. Yeah. Pathfinder. Yeah, I guess that's the name of the steamship company, but the boat name on AIS was the Dorothy Ann for the call sign, so we called them while they're on that. Big ship. There it is, the Dorothy Ann. This weather is making me cranky. <laughs> well, it is. Anyway, the uh, freighters, the big freighters, use channel 12 and channel 1 2. And we've checked out our handheld radio by using that to make sure she's working. And, uh, and yeah, you never use that. Yeah, well, rarely use it, so it's good to know that it works. And um, we are. <laughs> That is so big. Giving this guy a wide berth here. We ask him if uh, the one whistle would work for him, and it does. We're over here at the edge of the channel, still 31 feet. That is the... We're living on the edge. Yeah, garden gnome. Gar I thought you were saying garden gnome. Garden you know that little no, gnome? No, no, garden gnome. You put out in the garden. Whole steam, big freighter. Doesn't have much weight, does he? Not like the other ones. I don't think that they've had much today. Yeah. See if anybody's up there to wave. Oh, they're inside. <laughs> Wouldn't you be inside yeah, on a day inside, like today? Probably playing pool or whatever they got on those pool. things to keep the crew. You uh, think they have a pool on table no. on that? Maybe. Yeah, you know, I'm sure. I'm not working all the time. I don't well, know I mean, a deck like. of cards I can see, but yeah. a pool table? Yeah, it'd be kind of hard on a pool table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the water? That's nuts. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're in port, you know, you might be on a mm, No, it's still crazy. Certainly, getting that pool table leveled up on a freighter would be Are hard you hard. done? I'm done. Okay. Ping pong would be the okay. Though. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> I started out wearing shorts and a t-shirt today, but, uh, Look at me now. Had to get on the weather gear. I got rain boots and I got a raincoat. I got my hat on. I'll put the headset on my hat and then I'll cover them up with the uh, raincoat. So, this is what happens. Unexpected weather. All right, we're coming into the George Kemp Marina here. That Valley Camp freighter tucked away there. And then there's a Coast Guard boat on the other side. So we're gonna be whipping it in there where it says no wake. They're gonna put us on a tea head, which I'm very thankful for. I see um, some people at the end where that no wake is with umbrellas. So, you know, the weather is a little Little drizzly. I'm ready to get in there, get tied down, and get dry. There are a lot of boats in there. It says downtown, George Kemp Downtown Marina. I see t two dock hands out there on the tee head waiting to help us. So I better go get ready for them. So we are at the observation platform downtown Sault Ste. Marie. 
Looking out over the Sioux locks, the one closest to us is the MacArthur lock, and then the Poe lock, and then there's two more out there that I can't remember the names of, but we intend to go through one of these locks tomorrow on our way up to Whitefish. How are we going to decide which one? Well, goes, right? I guess we'll call them on the radio and see what's up. But oh, the, they uh, tell us? Yeah, they'll which tell us uh, which way, and we'll get up in the morning and look on AIS and see what might be coming inbound and then talk to the lockmaster. After our visit to the observation deck there to watch the freighters and see all the different locks that are out there, we ate at the Lockview restaurant. It was a great restaurant there. We sat up at the top. I guess at one time you could see the freighters go in through the locks, but uh, since then they've built up around it. And so we came back to our boat and watch the freighters go in and out. Yeah, an interesting thing is that this is called Sault Ste. Marie, spelled S-A-U-L-T, but the locks are called the Sioux Locks, S-O-O. -O. Yeah, so tomorrow we will go through one of those locks on our way up to a Whitefish Point, and this is our attempt to get all five Great Lakes in.